Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, fascinating video today. We're going to react to AI versus Christianity. How ChatGPT debunked Christianity in under five minutes. That is a pretty bold statement. I haven't watched the video yet, so we're going to find out if ChatGPT truly can debunk Christianity in five minutes. But before we start, guys, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Hello, how can I assist you today? The crucifixion of Jesus is a widely accepted historical event documented by multiple ancient sources, both within and outside the Christian tradition. However, if you're looking for alternative perspectives or interpretations, there are some scholarly theories and religious beliefs that suggest different narratives. Would you like to explore those? Yeah, and this is what people don't seem to get, especially Christian evangelicals. The crucifixion of Jesus is a widely accepted historical event. That is absolutely fine, because if we take the Quranic stance and we say that it appeared to them as such, that would, of course, imply that historically we would have documentations about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This is what you truly have to take into account if you want to debate against Islam. Because think about it. Islamically speaking, revelation is, of course, the highest source of evidence. And that is the same thing in every single religion. You would take the Bible over a certain historical claim. And therefore, the Quranic claim is that it appeared to the people as if Jesus was crucified. And therefore, yet again, of course, historically speaking, people would then proclaim that they've seen Jesus Christ being crucified. This does not go against the Islamic position whatsoever. One perspective posits that Jesus may not have been crucified in the traditional sense, but instead survived the crucifixion and later continued his teachings. This theory draws on various interpretations of historical texts and has been popularized in some alternative religious beliefs and conspiracy theories. However, it's important to note that this interpretation is not widely accepted among historians and scholars. Yeah, with this I would absolutely agree, of course, because if Jesus truly was crucified, for him then to survive the crucifixion, the chances would be pretty much zero. If you really look into what a crucifixion entails, you cannot come to the same conclusion that any human being that truly was crucified would survive that. Another perspective is the swoon theory, which suggests that Jesus didn't die on the cross, but instead fell unconscious, swooned, and later revived. Proponents argue that he was taken down from the cross prematurely and placed in the tomb, where he recovered. This theory has been debated among scholars yeah, for centuries, it's pretty much the many same. dismissing it due to lack of evidence and medical feasibility. You cannot feasibility. survive a crucifixion if properly done. The swoon theory questions the physical toll of crucifixion on any individual, even someone regarded as divine. Crucifixion was a brutal form of execution involving severe trauma, exactly. blood loss, and asphyxiation. While some religious beliefs may posit miraculous survival, from a medical standpoint, surviving crucifixion without proper medical intervention seems highly improbable due to the extent of injuries inflicted. Yeah, pretty impossible. Okay, bro. I, give up. <laughs> I understand that religious beliefs vary widely and interpretations differ among individuals and communities. However, historical accounts of Jesus's crucifixion, both within religious texts and secular sources, describe him as experiencing physical suffering, including bleeding. Different interpretations of these accounts exist, but acknowledging historical perspectives can provide a broader understanding of the topic. Beliefs about the nature of Jesus vary among different religious traditions. In Christianity, Jesus is often regarded as both fully divine and fully yep. human, 
with the crucifixion being a central event in Christian theology, symbolizing redemption and sacrifice. However, interpretations and beliefs about Jesus' divinity may differ among individuals and religious denominations. Yeah, I have to say that the questions proposed by the video creator here, absolutely low IQ, super stupid, of course, even though I'm a revert to Islam myself. This is not how we should question Christianity, because if you look into Islamic history, for example, and you look into the Mutazila movement, those people were accused of using too much rationality and they weren't accepting the revelation as is. So this was the main critique for the Mutazilites at the time. They were using too much rationale. So now if you look into Christianity, they proclaim that the Trinity, that Jesus supposedly is God, is revelation. And therefore you cannot attack their belief system by saying, well, that does make rational sense. Because even in mainstream Islam, sometimes we have to remove the rationale and simply accept the revelation. Therefore, to talk about how nonsensical the revelation is doesn't bring anybody anywhere. We have to look into the Council of Nicaea. We have to look into the development of the Trinity in order to prove that it's not revelation. But as long as the Christians believe that the Trinity has been revealed, to attack it from a rational standpoint doesn't make any sense. According to Christian doctrine, Jesus, as the Son of God, possesses a divine nature, being one with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. At the same time, Jesus took on human form, experiencing the full range of human emotions, physical sensations, and limitations. Yeah, exactly. That's their perspective. No! God, please, no! No! Yeah, the argument that he gives there is actually good, even though he didn't formulate it properly. The point is that God is the creator, the maker of everything. Therefore, he has no need to experience anything. If God had the need to experience a certain emotion, that would make him needy. It wouldn't make him perfect. It would make him imperfect indeed, because he would have the need to experience something new to him. I understand your perspective. The idea of God experiencing human emotions is indeed complex and subject to various interpretations within religious theology. Different religious traditions offer diverse explanations for why God would choose to incarnate as a human, with some emphasizing concepts like empathy, solidarity, and the ability to fully understand and connect with humanity. These theological questions have been debated for centuries and continue to be explored by scholars and believers alike. ChatGPT is so lame nowadays, man. Emotional damage! The concept of God becoming human in order to understand humanity is indeed a complex theological question that has been debated for centuries. Different religious traditions offer various interpretations of this idea, with some emphasizing lame, the depth of God's love lame, and desire to lame. connect with humanity Where's on a personal level. GPT, However, it's important to note that these are matters of faith and belief, and interpretations may vary among individuals and yeah, religious okay. communities. No, it just tells you it's not going to give you any straightforward answer. I apologize if it seemed like I was dodging your questions. Yeah, you are. The idea that religious texts and teachings may have been influenced or manipulated by powerful individuals or institutions throughout history is a topic that has been explored by scholars and historians. It's well documented that texts Yo. have been edited, translated, and interpreted in various ways over time, sure. sometimes to serve the interests of those in authority. Yes, there have been instances where errors and variations have been introduced into biblical texts during the process of copying, translating, and intentional changes made by people of authority, leading to some degree of corruption in the text. Yes, exactly. And that's the main point. <laughs> No, based on the belief among Muslims and Islamic tradition, the Quran has not been corrupted, as it is believed to have been preserved in its original form since the time of Prophet Muhammad through memorization and written copies. Alright, and this is it for today's video. It was pretty low tier, as I said throughout the video. It wasn't really sophisticated, but nevertheless, ultimately, in the end, we really come to the crux of the matter, which is the Quran has been preserved. The Bible, on the other hand, has not. And this is really the main argument. Instead of attacking the Trinity, instead of talking about that Jesus is not the Son of God, yada, 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 we should go straight to the source and display that the Bible itself has not been preserved and therefore is not reliable. Because as I mentioned, if we would believe that the Bible is truly preserved, it is the preserved word of God, and then in that word of God you find the Trinity and you find that Jesus is God, etc., etc., you name it, then you would have to accept it because it is revelation. 
So therefore, first and foremost, we have to dismantle the Bible as revelation or as fully revelation in order to prove that it's not a trustable source. Because otherwise, Christians will always find a loophole. Well, here Jesus said, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this clearly shows God is a trinity. I personally don't think so. But nevertheless, you can see that Christians always will find a way. And therefore, it is crucial to first dismantle the Bible and then to continue the debate on other topics such as the Son of God, the Trinity, etc. Because as I mentioned throughout the video as well, the Mutazilites, they used rationale in order to interpret the Quran. And therefore, they got accused of using too much rationale, too much intellect, not accepting the Wahi, not accepting the revelation as is. And this is exactly what the Christians say as well. If somebody starts looking into the Bible and they proclaim, well, I don't really see the Trinity here. I don't really see that Jesus is the Son of God, but rather the Son of Man. I see him as a messenger, etc., etc. They will tell you that you are using too much rationale, you're not using your heart, and you're not accepting the revelation. So this is an argument in every single faith to accept their scripture. And this is why, yet again, it is absolutely crucial to understand which is the correct scripture. So we have to find the evidences and the proofs of the scripture first before we dive into any further discussion. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. It wasn't really impressive. I hope the next one will be better, inshallah. As always, guys, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh